Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 19 is set to be the biggest change yet and we should see it within just a couple weeks at this point. In just under two weeks, on June 9th, 2025, we should see iOS 19 for the first time. Apple will show it off at WWDC 2025 with all the new features, changes, and updates. And so I thought we'd go over all of the biggest changes we're expecting yet and all the features that we know about so far. Now, the first thing I get asked all the time, will my device support iOS 19? And while we don't know this 100%, the leakers every year seem to be pretty accurate. And from what we're hearing so far this year, the one device or three devices on the iPhone side that won't be supported are the iPhone XS, XS Max, as well as the iPhone XR. So if you have those devices, supposedly they're going to lose support. But again, this could change and we'll hear about this on June 9th. But either way, I would plan for that, and if you have one of those devices, you won't be able to use iOS 19, supposedly. Again, it could change, but just keep in mind that Apple does sort of push out the older devices to make room for the newer ones. Now, the big thing this year is supposed to be a new design. Internally, it's called Solarium, and Mark Gurman has said it's going to be the biggest change since iOS 7. It's roughly based on Vision OS, which means we'll have a lot of translucency or sort of a glass look to it, and you can see some of this in the developer app. With the WWDC 2025 logo, there's additional depth, there's some glass look to it, and it just has a different look overall. It looks like they're bringing back some depth, at least for a little bit, and that's something I would definitely welcome. I was never a huge fan of flat design with iOS 7, and bringing back some depth, or neomorphism, or maybe even a little skeuomorphism, I wouldn't really mind. I miss sort of just having a little bit more depth to icons, the overall OS, and having some more translucency and more throughout. We're also hearing that we're going to have floating tab bars. So we could have tab bars at the bottom. We've seen this with some concepts from John Prosser from Front Page Tech, where at the bottom of the overall camera app, we could have sort of a floating bar instead, or we'll see that throughout different applications. We could also see different menu changes, and I've shown this a little bit with the sports app. If you go into sports, then maybe go into the top menu in the upper right. Here we have our settings. So we have the option to go right into our settings from here instead of going into a separate settings app. In fact, Mark Gurman has said that we're going to have an all new way to interact with our device that's sort of more up to date, and we don't know exactly what that means. So we could have all new ways instead of going into settings and going into each thing individually and then having some settings here, some settings within the music app. It would be great to have them just within the app themselves. Maybe that will allow for Apple to update apps individually more easily or something along those lines. Of course, we're not expecting just updates to different UI elements, but also things such as applications. So I mentioned that with camera already. We also are hearing that we could get a dedicated app for video games. Instead of going into the app store and seeing arcade, we could see something dedicated specifically for video games themselves, according to Mark Gurman. This would make sense if Apple is pushing more and more into video games on TV OS and iPhone and iPad and Mac. So maybe to have something dedicated that sort of separates that out from all of the different great apps we have already. In addition to this, the calendar app is also said to get some sort of revamp as Apple is hiring someone to engineer something to go along with calendar. And also they recently purchased a company that integrates AI and understands the context of your calendar a little bit better. So we could see some major changes there with the overall design, as well as some features. We long have heard about battery intelligence, and it looks like Apple may be incorporating this in iOS 19 instead some sort of battery management that utilizes AI to understand how you use your battery and then make it last much more throughout the day. This is something I would welcome. So maybe you plug in your battery. It would know maybe something along the lines of you plugged it in today, maybe charged it for two hours, up to 100%, heavily utilized Instagram, X, TikTok, or YouTube, or any of the others, and it would learn your usage patterns and then turn off apps in the background more aggressively and really extend your battery life overall. Apple was once really known as having the most incredible battery life, the most optimized software, and while they still do have great battery life compared to other phones for the most part, they're still starting to fall behind. Of course, battery health could better be explained here, and it could use AI to better manage that as well. While all batteries degrade over time, Apple does seem to be extending it with things such as the iPhone 16 lineup, where I'm still at 210 cycles and 100% capacity. 
Most people are seeing 250 cycles before it even drops this year. So being able to extend that along with battery life itself, I think would be a big win for everyone. Another thing we know Apple's going to work on because they've said it themselves is end to end encryption in iMessage with RCS messaging. Not all carriers offer RCS, but if you do have it, you can go into your apps, go down to messages and within messages. If you scroll down, you'll see RCS messaging. If you have it enabled, once it's enabled, it allows for things such as letting people know when you're typing back and forth. It works better within Android with group chats, and now we'll have end to end encryption. We'll also be able to do things such as unsend a message, edit the message, have in-line replies like we currently do with iMessage, and also tap back support. So if you're in a message itself, you can double tap and then reply, and that's a tap back. So it would have more active support for things like that, and that should be coming soon. Also, we're hearing that Wi-Fi features are said to get a few upgrades as well. Apple's really pushed a lot of these updates as far as private relay and more. However, with iOS 19, it's said that we're going to have more consistency across public networks. So maybe you go into your Wi-Fi, and within your Wi-Fi, maybe you join a network that's public in a hotel or maybe a coffee place or something along those lines. It will be able to remember that information, sync it across iCloud, maybe know to even turn on a VPN if you're in a public local network. So those things hopefully will be updated with Wi-Fi. We're also hearing quite a few things as far as live translations for AirPods. So if you're using AirPods along with your iPhone, we may be able to have live translations in real time, whether or not that's something separate or directly within the translation app is hard to say, but it makes sense that Apple would add it to the translate app. So you could talk in real time back and forth using your AirPods. You could speak in English. They could speak in Spanish, for example, and I would hear them speak in English while they hear me speak in Spanish. This is something Google recently showed off with Gemini and Apple could definitely benefit from that sort of update. So that makes sense that they're working on something similar. The health app is also expected to get an update with Apple intelligence or some sort of AI assistant, according to Mark Gurman. What this could offer is something along the lines of you slept for five hours and 20 minutes. You walked 977 steps. You need more sleep. And maybe you need to walk further throughout the day if you'd like to lose weight or just maintain a healthy lifestyle. It could give advice based on this. And this isn't accurate for me as I don't really wear my watch to bed. So some of this information isn't really accurate as I don't wear my watch when I go for a walk sometimes. And that though could give you some more information, giving you more in-depth details, even based on heart information with the sensors in your Apple watch. So lots of things are expected for the health app. We're also hearing that we could have stage manager for iPhone when connected via USB-C. Now this would offer maybe sort of an interface like we have with the iPad. So maybe you connect it via USB-C to a screen, then you have maybe something similar to what we have with Samsung in Dex maybe sort of an iPad interface where we could connect with our iPhone, control it with a keyboard and mouse and get some more work done. That makes a lot of sense. It's something that the processors are definitely capable of, but Apple just has never added to the iOS updates. So that's something that makes a lot of sense. Whether or not they do it though is hard to say. Of course, we do know a few things that we're going to get for sure, as Apple talked about them a few weeks ago. On May 13th, Apple revealed powerful accessibility features coming later this year. These, of course, will be in iOS 19, and this is great for accessibility users. I have a separate video on this, but it offers things such as accessibility reader, magnifier on Mac, and then it will offer nutrition labels like we have currently for privacy in the app store, but rather for accessibility, where it tells us what features are supported for what specific apps. We're also gaining things such as live captions on Apple watch vehicle motion cues on Mac, as well as CarPlay with larger text and Braille enhancements as well. Lots of great things coming soon. And even vision pro is getting some updates with enhanced zoom features. So all of those are rolling out with iOS 19 vision OS three, and you can see these here. I'll link these in the description below as I've talked about them in a separate video, but even background sounds gain things such as new EQ settings. Updates to personal voice, again, vehicle motion cues for Mac, eye tracking updates, head tracking updates, and people that can't use their limbs can even use implants in their brain to communicate with Mac. This is something they're working on to make it easier for those that need that. So lots of great updates. 
sound recognition adds name recognition, voice control, lots of huge updates for accessibility users, but there will be even more. However, we are hearing that Apple this year is going to maybe pull back on the amount that they announce before it's actually ready. This is a great move that I think we'll see. And instead of maybe saying we're going to have 300 to 400 features like we did with iOS 18, maybe they'll pull back and say, here's 100 great features and updates, and they'll be ready by the time it launches in the fall. So just like with iOS 18, they introduced Siri with context and conversational Siri, similar to chat GPT. Those things are still not ready yet. Apple is said to be working on those for iOS 19 to have them ready in the fall finally. But at this point, we shouldn't have things announced that aren't ready yet. So this makes sense if Apple's going to really pull back some of that information. So Siri with context though, is said to be coming to iOS 19 along with a conversational Siri. Apple executives believe it will be on par with chat GPT. So I think that's some good news there and hopefully we'll finally see those Apple intelligence features. Some have said we want more customization, whether or not we'll get that, we don't know. And as far as split view, we could have a split view update. We've had it on iPad for some time where you can go into maybe music slide up and then bring in another app. Many people have been asking for this on iOS and it's really the only major thing they haven't brought yet. So it would make sense to see that soon. In the United States, there could be a new feature coming with iOS 19 that could be super helpful when transferring your eSIM. We no longer have physical SIM card ports in the United States. This varies of course throughout the world, but Android Authority actually found in Android 16 beta one that it hints at a SIM transfer tool or something to make that a little bit easier going between iPhone and Android. So if maybe we want to transfer more easily where we no longer have the option for a physical SIM card like we used to, that would make it much better if we want to transfer from iPhone to Android or from Android back to iPhone. So I definitely would welcome that and hopefully we see that soon. As far as the release dates, well, on June 9th, like I mentioned, is WWDC 20. 25 and typically we will get the first beta after the keynote. The keynote takes place at 1 p.m. Eastern time, usually lasts about two hours. So around 4 p.m. Eastern time, we start to see the betas roll out for developers. Now the public beta usually is toward the end of the month or early July. So that could be a while until we see that, but we will have developer betas at least for a couple of weeks throughout June. And then of course the public beta along with developer beta all throughout the summer with a public release typically in the second or third week of September. This typically goes along with the iPhone 17 launch or whatever the next iPhone phones are, and that's what we can expect as far as a public release. So, so far, that's everything we know. We don't have any definitive things, but usually these leaks are pretty accurate at this point. And the final thing is Apple is focusing on stability this year. They know that iOS is glitchy, has a bunch of issues. And according to Mark Gurman internally, they're actually working on stability. So again, this could go along with them limiting the amount of features that are ready. Let's make sure everything works well, that we have 50 or 100 solid features that work well, and then we'll work on the next ones when they're not buggy. That's the sort of direction I would love to see Apple go in along with that redesign. But let me know what you think of the updates so far. Do you think that will actually happen? Do you think we'll get a redesign? I'm pretty sure we will at this point, but let me know what you think. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.